This movie is about braids and mathematics. Everyone knows what a braid is. Braids are everywhere, in hairdressing, in jewelry, in leather belts, in ropes, in cakes, in cheese, in bread, and in many, many other objects. Braiding is one of the oldest ways to decorate objects. And in mathematics? What is a braid? Why do mathematicians study braids and how? Take a disc and choose some points inside it. Make a parallel copy of it and start drawing strands that connect the marked points. The strands flow from the left to the right. They are not allowed to turn back. The strands can be braided and linked together. But two strands cannot pass in the same point. Intersections are not allowed. Draw strands until all the marked points are connected by them. This is a braid. For simplicity, we will not draw the discs and the points anymore, but only the strands. In this way, we can construct a lot of braids, just using two strands and repeating the same crossing a different number of times. With three strands we can realize more complex braids. And so on, with any number of strands. How can we recognize when two braids are combed in the same way? The only thing that matters is the way in which the strands are linked together. For example, these two braids are the same we can deform one into the other, keeping the endpoints fixed and not letting the strands cross. So, we can represent one braid in many different ways. All these braids are obtained deforming the original one, keeping the endpoints fixed. All these are equivalent braids. Still, there are braids that cannot be deformed one into the other. So, we say that there are different equivalence classes, formed by the braids that can be transformed into each other. To determine a class, we can choose any of its representatives. When we draw a braid, we do not mean just that specific representative, but all the braids it represents. How can we choose the representatives for each braid? Further, if we draw two braids, how can we know if they are equal or different? For example, these two braids are the same, we just need to move the blue strand between the red one and the green one. But what about these two? Are they the same braid? And if we have more complex braids? To answer, we try to find a mathematical structure on the set of braids. The first thing we note 
is that we can compose two braids. This just means to put one after the other and connect the strands. Now, take two representatives of the same braid. On the right, draw two representatives of another braid. Then, compose them. Making some deformations, we see that these are two representatives of the same braid. The result does not depend on which representatives we choose for our braids. The composition of braids is an operation, like the product of positive numbers. The product has some beautiful properties. It is associative and commutative. Do these properties hold for the composition of braids? Here, we compose three braids in the two possible ways, keeping the order. Of course, we get the same braid. So, associativity holds. And we can write any number of subsequent compositions without using parentheses. What about commutativity? Here is an example. We compose two braids in the two possible ways. The result can be different. Look at the red strand, starting from bottom left. It arrives in different positions on the right. So, these braids cannot be the same. This means that commutativity does not hold. Thinking of the product again, there is a neutral element, 1. Is there such an element for the composition of braids? Take the trivial braid, where all the strands are parallel. When we compose any braid with it, the result is equivalent to the original braid. Any number has an inverse with respect to the product. Is there an inverse for any braid? Look at the braid in a mirror. We can compose these two braids in two ways. First, the original braid and then its mirror image or vice versa, first the mirror image and then the original braid. In both cases, we can simplify them and we get the identity braid. So, for every braid there is an inverse. So far, we have seen that on the set of braids we can define an associative operation. It has a neutral element, and for every element in the set, there is an inverse. Such a structure is called a group. To deal with braids, it can be useful to associate a word, a sequence of symbols, to each braid. To the identity braid, we assign the symbol 1, because this is the neutral element for the composition. We call sigma1 the braid where the first two strands are exchanged by a clockwise twist, 
looking from the left. The other strands are straight. In Sigma 2, the second and the third strands are linked together by a clockwise twist. And here is Sigma 3, where the linked strands are the third and the fourth. If the first two strands twist in the other direction, we will have Sigma 1 inverse. It is called so because it is actually the inverse of Sigma 1. This is Sigma 2 inverse the inverse of sigma 2. And here is sigma 3 inverse, the inverse of sigma 3. Using these elementary braids as bricks, we can construct many different braids. Here is an example. We put a brick after the other and write the corresponding word. The braid is described by the word. Can we describe any braid using the elementary braids? Take this braid. It looks quite complicated, but we can deform it. Then we can cut it into levels. Each level is an elementary braid with just one crossing. This procedure works on every braid, so to any braid we can associate a word. Now, there are different words representing the same braid. For example, an elementary braid and its inverse cancel out when they are side by side. We can replace them by the identity braid. And we can cancel out the trivial piece. Vice versa, we can insert in any place an elementary braid followed by its inverse. And there is more. Here, the blue strand passes between two strands that form a crossing. Here, two crossings involving different strands exchange their positions moving horizontally. All these movements are easily translated into manipulation of the words. Surely, there are other permitted movements. Here, the yellow strand passes in front of a crossing. Here, we cancel out an elementary braid and its inverse, even if they are distant. How can we find all the possible manipulations of the words? It seems an endless job. Don't worry, mathematicians have already solved this problem. The first mathematician who studied braids in these terms was Emil Artin. In 1928, he wrote the first paper about braids in German. 
Twenty years later, he wrote a second important one in English. Emil Artin was the first who described the structure of group on the set of braids and noted that the group can be described in this way. This mathematical notation means that any braid can be described as a word in the sigma i's and their inverses. In every group, we have these reductions. They are local, they change just a little part of the word, keeping the rest fixed. The only other substitutions permitted in a word are of two kinds. We already saw the corresponding moves. Moving the blue strands through a crossing and exchanging the left and the right crossings. With these two moves, called relations, we can generate all the words that describe the same braid. We have turned braids into mathematical objects.